Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. I'm Melissa Peck from the Global Wind Energy Council and welcome to today's webcast on wind, doing business in Argentina. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping rules. When you joined today's webcast, you selected to join either by phone call or computer audio. If for any reason you'd like to change your selection, you can do th so through your audio pane in your control panel. Throughout today's webcast, you can submit text questions to the speakers by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You can send in your questions at any time. We'll collect them and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentations. If we don't get time to answer your question during the webcast, we will follow it up by email afterwards. The presentations you'll see today are available for download in the handout section pane of your control panel. You may download them anytime during the webcast. I would now like to introduce you to Karen Olenforst, Director of Market Intelligence at the Global Wind Energy Council. Karen will provide a brief overview of Argentina's wind market and introduce the speakers we have joining us today for this webcast. Over to you, Karen. Thank you, Alicia, and uh, welcome everyone, and thank you for, for joining and, and dialing in today. Um, Argent Argentina is a, is a very relevant and is interesting market for the wind industry. Um, at the end of 2018, we had an installed base of just over 700 megawatt. And um, right now with the current market activity, we see that now as we are in the middle of the year, we have actually reached over one gigawatt of installed capacity in Argentina. And I think that's, that's an important milestone. Um, with this installed capacity, Argentina is among the leading markets in Latin America next to um, very relevant markets uh, such as Brazil and, and Mexico. And um, GVAC Market Intelligence actually expects that about four gigawatts will be added, four gigawatts of new capacity will be added in, in the next five years, so until 2023. I would like to introduce our two speakers today. Um, in the order of, of how they are of the, how they are speaking. Uh, first of all, my colleague Ramon Fiestas, our chair of the GVEX Latin America Committee, um, will give a more in-depth market update. And then uh, we have a guest speaker, Gabriel Beresuk. Um, he is an investment consultant from the Argentina Investment Trade and Promotion Agency, and he will share with us his insights on Renovar and what's beyond the Renovar. As my colleague Alicia said, um, please feel free to um, share questions in the question box and we will take the questions after the presentations, which should last about half of, the, of this one hour, hour webinar. Um, with that, I would like to hand over to Ramon um, to share his insights on Argentina. Thank you, Karin. Good morning, good afternoon to you all. Thank you to joining our webcast today about uh, Argentina. Uh, I just want to give you briefly a market update on, on what is happening in, in the wind power sector in, in, in Argentina. So what uh, what we what we see in Argentina is that after 2013, um, the wind power installed capacity started to 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 to, to grow. Uh, in, in a very, I would say, in a very relevant uh, way, uh, joining the projects that came from uh, Henren was the first uh, renewable energy program launching in the former, in the past, in the in, in the in the, um, in the past administration. Uh, from Henren, that was about 1,000 uh, megawatts uh, for wind power awarded in, in this program. Uh, the single, I would say, the single wind farm that was uh, effectively uh, constructed was uh, the one who was uh, started operations in 2013. This was from Canaria, uh, 218 megawatt uh, wind farm. And after that, what we see is that um, with the uh, very relevant change of uh, the structure of the Renewable Energy Act in terms of uh, including uh, mandatory renewable energy targets 
and uh, developing a specific uh, mechanism uh, in the secondary regulation to put in force the, the renewable energy targets through the uh, Renewable Energy Program, Renovar, was really uh, the, the driving force for what we see uh, in, in, in Argentina in, in the past three, four years. So, uh, as Karin mentioned, we are in, in, in 722 installs gigawatt in a row, in, in, in total, uh, of which close to 500 were installed in 2018, coming, coming from, I would say, the, the latest projects that were in the, peri in the transitory period between, between the Hendren and the Renovar and, and, and some of the projects coming from, from the, auction mechanism of Renovar 1. And uh, what we see is that the trend uh, is still uh, going on with uh, many of the projects that were awarded in, in, in the auctions there. Uh, if we look into the position of Argentina uh, in the region, what we see is that in 2018, with this uh, amount of, of uh, uh, wind power installed capacity in, in, in the year 2018. Argentina was the third market um, in, in the region with 13% uh, of the installed capacity that was uh, 3.7 gigawatts, of which 50% or more, a little bit more than 50%, 51% is Brazil, as it is usual in in the region since uh, wind power started to develop here in, in Latin America. And the second market is uh, Mexico with 25% uh, of, of the installed capacity in the year. If, if you look into the figures um, that uh, is shown here in the right, in the right part of the slide, you will see that uh, in total, um, uh, Latin America has, is five percent of the global installed capacity in 2018, uh, with 25.6 uh, gigawatts of uh, wind power installed capacity, of which close to 60 percent is belonging to to the Brazilian market, and uh, close to 20 percent is is the Mexican market. So the figures of Argentina are still here in a third percent of, of the total installed capacity of the region. But we expect that this figure is growing up to close to 10% in the next five, five years. So why? Because uh, what we see is that uh, this year in 2019, um, we expect to see a little more than one gigawatt of installed capacity coming from the different uh, scenarios or frameworks that the government set up in, in the Renovar program as well as in the in the free market scheme. This is the, the, the matter scheme that I'm sure Gabriel is going to explain wider later. And what we see is that the pipeline of projects that is uh, awarded uh, in, in all the Renovar program as well as the the projects in the pipeline of the matter will give us, um, let's say, uh, an outlook of, of close to this 5,000 um, gigawatt that uh, Karin mentioned before. Taking into consideration that um, there is still an announcement uh, regarding the fourth tender of Renovar, this is from four, that is not explicitly uh, enacted but some uh, figures have been given by the government in in order to to give a, a signal of this of what, what is going to be this this round with close to one gigawatt of of, of uh, projects for wind and solar of which uh, close to 75 percent would be projects um, uh, of, of wind power and and related of course with uh, grid infrastructure developments to make them uh, feasible and to make them effectively uh, constructed. We see here how um, in this slide the um, the prices of, of, of the awarded projects are in between $59 uh, 
and forty dollars, the lowest in 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 the second. Uh, in Renovar 7.5, this is the, the second part of the, the second round of Renovar. And uh, then they, they uh, scale up in, in the Renovar 3 uh, auction. Uh, I'm not sure how, how many of you are familiar with this, this uh, round 3 auction. This is a smaller scale um, uh, auction of, of uh, wind and solar and, and other renewal technologies that are uh, more smaller scale based and, and connected to the distribution grid. So in, in that sense, uh, it explains that the cost of this, uh, this project um, is a little bit higher than it was the, the, the projects um, pending on, on, on the former uh, auctions as well as the matter scheme. The matter scheme, if you look into the right, you, you will see that the, there are uh, exactly 862 megawatts uh, being developed under this um, market-based scheme. These are projects to be added to the pipeline of the, uh, of the, of the auction-based projects. So uh, in, in total, we foresee this um, huge, effort and development market that Argentina is, is becoming as well uh, in the next in, in the next years. Uh, this is all that I wanted to tell you now because I'm sure that Gabriel is going to to, to present in depth uh, some more details regarding all the, the, the structure of, of the of the program and, and what is going on in the future. Many thanks. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you for that. And uh, with that, uh, I would like to hand over to, to Gabriel. I was so good pronouncing his last name when I introduced you, um, but uh, I leave it to you now, Gabriel. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much, Karin. I will share you my presentation. Well, <clears throat> hello, everyone. Um, I'm Gabriel Veresiuk. I work in the Argentinian Investment uh, and Trade Promotion Agency. I work in the Energy Division. Um, and well, the aim of this presentation is to walk you through uh, the main wind energy opportunities in, in Argentina. So with it, I think it's important to mention that after more than a decade of uh, underinvestment or, or really low investment in the energy industry that led to really expensive imports, we strongly believe that the market has found a path of, of growth. Uh, in 2015, President Macri's administration took office and aimed policy at eliminating subsidies and regulatory interference in the power industry, switching to a more cost-realistic and market-oriented policy. As you may see in this slide, um, the power sector in Argentina is the third largest uh, power market in, in Latin America after Mexico and, and Brazil. Uh, and we have the biggest natural gas market of South America. It's even bigger than the Brazilian natural gas uh, market. Another key element of the sector is that as, as a result of the policies carried out in the 90s, we are highly connected with the, with the neighboring countries. The renewable energy uh, the share of renewable energy in the energy matrix is uh, really uh, small. Um, so we wanted to speed up the transition to the renewable energy for two main reasons. First, to depend less on imported fuels, uh, and then second, to continue reducing the carbon emission to such achieve the Treaty of the Paris uh, Agreement. In 2016, we passed a new law that is the renewable energy law, setting different targets. And the main one is to have by 2025, 20% uh, of the electricity uh, consumption has to be supplied by renewable. Argentina was way behind on this matter and still is compared to other countries. But uh, on the other hand, we have the, the advantage of the lesson technology the new technology that allow us to have more efficient costs and prices in the projects. Um, 
as you may know, well, we launched the Renovar program, which includes the, the FODER, that is the Argentinian Renewable Energy Fund, and established fiscal incentives and, and competitive and transparent market rules, so as to attract international investors. The power consumed by 2025 is expected to be uh, around 55 gigawatts, uh, and that is 20 additional gigawatts uh, compared to 2015. And half of those 20 gigawatts, I mean 10 gigawatts, must come from renewable sources. That represents uh, $15 billion of investment. And well, we already invest more than $7 billion. And we have already awarded uh, six year awards of the 10 that we have as a goal. So that's 60% of, of the goal we have. <laughs> well, as you may know, Argentina has amazing renewable energy resources. Uh, the geographical characteristics are exceptional both for wind and, and solar energy. Um, and according to the Renewable Energy Country Attractiveness Index, that was done by, by EY, by Ernst Young. Uh, Argentina is in the, in the top 10 of, of, the, of these most attractive uh, countries investing in renewables. Uh, particularly in wind, regarding wind energy, the, the Patagonia region um, has one of the three most important wind corridors in the world, with very stable and strong winds throughout the entire year, with an average speed of uh, nine meters uh, per second. We also have winds of more than six meters per second in, in more than 70% of Argentina's territory um, with wind farms uh, with capacity factors ranging from 35 uh, to 55%. I also would like to mention that a few weeks ago, um, the Parque Eólico de Wind Farm uh, Manantiales Bear from IPF, the, the national company YPF, uh, reach 60% of capacity factor, and that's uh, remarkable because it's one of the, I think it's one of the top 10 most uh, significant capacity factors worldwide regarding uh, onshore uh, projects. About the tenders, about the, the Renovar program, um, so far we have three uh, tenders, uh, Renovar 1 and 2. Um, were launched during 2016 and 2017, respectively. And now we are in the process of, of the re mini REN or Renovar 3. Renovar 1, um, we launched in, at the end of 2016 uh, with the idea of uh, award, awarding one Shia award of, of new capacity. Um, and the results were beyond expectations for the power uh, and the prices offered. Investor interest was amazing and led to significant uh, oversubscription of six times the capacity called for tender. Uh, in 2017, uh, we launched the Renovar 2 with the idea of awarding 1.2 gigawatts, and it had it happened something similar. We had an oversubscription of eight times the, the original capacity. As a result of this, we ended up awarding uh, 4.5 gigawatts. Uh, of renewable energy capacity. Um, you might be wondering what were the critical factors of, of this success. Um, the thing is that the process was simple, efficient, and, and transparent. We, we listened to the, to the investor needs and offered a 20 year PPA in dollars with different level of, of guarantees and, and fiscal benefits. We mentioned the public tenders, but we also have the private energy term market. <coughs> um, the idea is to provide a feasible alternative to purchase energy, different from the tenders uh, implemented by, by CAMESA, that is the Hotel Electricity Market Administration Company. Why it's an opportunity, the, the matter? Well, for, for the large users, uh, it makes it, make it possible to comply with the renewable energy consumption quotas individually and not through CAMESA. Um, on the other hand, the generators have the possibility of doing a business uh, apart from, from tenders. Where is the current stick for the large users? Well, um, they can freely negotiate the, the term and, and the prices. 
uh, they will have better prices than staying in the joint purchasing mechanis mechanism conducted by, by the off-taker, like the MESA. Uh, they wouldn't pay the, the administration and the commercialization charges. And they will have a rate discount in the power reserve fees. Uh, the generators to negotiate higher prices compared to the ones obtained in, in tenders, and they wouldn't suffer the curtailment or risk. Um, so far, we have more than a sheer one uh, of, of capacity awarded. Uh, this is around 1.2 gigawatts for 49 projects, and 66% 6 of, of, uh, of these projects belong to, uh, to wind projects. <clears throat> What's the situation until now with, with all these projects? Well, we have more than 150 new power plants uh, in operation or under construction. We are talking about 4.8 gigawatts uh, with an investment of $7.4 uh, billion. Um, 117 projects belong to the Renovar for 3.8 gigawatts, and then we have uh, the rest of the capacity for uh, the matter plus. Uh, self-generation projects. Regarding the capital flow of, of the of, of the renewable industry in, in Argentina, uh, as you may see, uh, most of, of the financing uh, comes from well from here, from, from from Argentina, from local companies, and from local banks. But then you have um, financing coming from well the United States, China, Germany, France, as well as the and the multilateral, like the well, the IDB, the IFC, and and the CAF, the, the Corporación Andina de Fomento. I mentioned before briefly the the mini ren. Um, well, the, the mini ren, the idea was to of tender uh, that was launched at the end of last year was to um, uh, take advantage of the medium tension wheel. Um, that's why the power per project cannot exceed the 10 megawatt. Um, we wanted to award 400 megawatts, and uh, we ended up awarding 200, around 260 megawatts for uh, 38 projects. But this this tender is still under, um, let's say, the tendering process. We we are um, some projects that couldn't enter into this uh, tender. Um, we we asked them or, or, or we we proposed them to to improve their prices. Um, I bet that you, you, the most important, let's say, uh, thing now in, in, in the renewable energy uh, sector in Argentina is the Renovar 4. And there are great expectations from all the investors regarding the, the Renovar 4. Uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, the Undersecretary of Renewable Energy, uh, Mr. Sebastian King, um, said that during this year we, we, we were going to launch the tender. But as you may know, well, the, the situation in, in Argentina, where we're still analyzing uh, if, if, if a tender is launched or not this year. So far, the idea is to launch it uh, in November, but we're still analyzing. Uh, if it's launched this year or, or during 2020. Um, the goal of this tender is to award one gigawatt of new capacity, a thousand megawatts. Um, and the new um, the particular thing of this tender is that it will also include the construction of a new transmission lines. As you can see in this slide, uh, from those thousand megawatts, 700, 750 megawatts will be um, will come from wind energy and 250 from solar. And also, uh, it will include at least three new transmission lines um, so as to incorporate this new capacity. Right now, the bottleneck we have is uh, belongs to the, to the transmission, to the high, high voltage uh, grid transmission lines. So that's why in this tender, uh, the developers will need to uh, Offer a price for 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 the project as well as um, um, a price for the construction of of the new lines. 
<clears throat> wrap up um, the opportunities in the in the wind energy sector include um, providing financing or equity um, because many projects uh, are, are looking for for financing um, or they are selling their, their their projects many developers are selling their projects I could say at, at least 90 projects including all the all the renewable energies um, are, are looking for financing or equity and at least 15 or 20 wind uh, projects are, are also for for financing this is a, a great chance to EPA uh, uh, contract signing with uh, with the off-taker. Also, there are opportunities in the matter in the in in the private in the energy private market with um, corporate PPAs. Um, and well, the the last uh, opportunity that we are all uh, waiting for is, is the Renoir Four. That was all. Thank you very much. And, and in case you have any any questions or queries, please feel free to, to write me down an email or or ask right now to have any. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you so much for this, and uh, especially for talking about uh, Renova Four and uh, uh, the timeline for Renova Four. Um, I would like to thank both speakers and then thereby now move to our Q and A uh, session. Um, you can submit questions through the the question box in the in the webinar here. Um, but uh, I'd like to actually start with one question to to Gabriel. Um, as you as you talked about it a little bit, but maybe uh, we can go a bit deeper into this. The Mater scheme and the corporate PPAs. How do you foresee on a more medium to long term perspective the potential? For, for capacity coming out of this scheme, out of corporate PPAs in the Argentinian markets. Could you please repeat me the question, Karen. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Um, I was wondering if uh, if we could talk a bit more about the Mater scheme and the corporate PPAs, and if you could share your perspective uh, on the on the long term demand. Um, of this of this Mata scheme of corporate PPAs, how much volume it can actually drive in Argentina? All right. Well, um, this is a great interest from from the big companies, let's say, <coughs> uh, regarding the purchasing of renewable energy. Uh, it's also mandatory for those companies because they will have to uh, increasingly incorporate. Uh, uh, the, the, the purchasing of renewable energy according to the renewable energy law. So what we can see is that apart from the tenders, uh, Renoir 4, it could probably be the last tender in, in a while because um, what we are see, understanding here in, in the country is that we have incorporated a lot of capacity regarding thermal as well as uh, renewable energy. So the, the greatest opportunity here for the coming years will be the, the matter, the private energy market. And that will be um, that will be possible with, with all with this great interest from from all the large users uh, of electricity. That's that's why the, the matter we see that it has great perspective. Uh, great. We can see here many multinational companies that are that are here in, in the are settled here in the country and Day after day, or or yeah, like progressively, they are um, they have a greater interest in in purchasing renewable energy through these private uh, agreements, let's say. Mm. Um, and then um, I see here um, two questions, which I I believe we we can combine about Renova Four. Um, I mean, you talked about the, the timeline and the expected volume and, and the great opportunities on, on Renova 4. Um, could you also share your insights on the threats towards Renova 4? And uh, as you also mentioned, um, there's uh, the, the political situation is, is, is a bit uh, uh, challenging at the moment. Right. So, well, um, yeah, as you say, 
we are we are and um, doing a this is an electoral year, so we are, we are waiting. Uh, elections are going to be in October or November. Uh, Sebastian King said that the tender will be launched in in November. The situation now is that we have a country risk above uh, 1500 BPS. So right now, I, I cannot say that the Renoir 4 will be uh, necessarily launched with, with this level of country risk. We're still waiting on to see how how things go. Uh, the political and, and economical context here in, in Argentina. Uh, regarding the challenges, well, transmission is, is, the, is the main challenge now. Um, we, the, the, the developers will need to, to do the construction of these new lines. But a general <coughs> comment uh, or feedback from, from the main players here in, Ar in Argentina is that um, they, the, the process of the, of the Renault 4 tender um it's quite short i mean they, they will only have 120 days that four months uh to, to submit the the bids so it's it, that's one of the main uh challenges mm. of, of the developers mm. Mm. And, and, uh, uh, sorry, as well as well as the financial issue that's that's the only the other thing the financial mm. issue it's it's related with with the level of of country risk we, we have now that it, mm. it makes a bit complicated for investors to plan in the country now mm. and and i think it's 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 again worth highlighting that renova 4 includes the auctioning of, of grid infrastructure and that the previous auction rounds didn't have this this combination right so um and and as we see grid infrastructure connectivity to grid actually as one of the key bottlenecks not only in argentina but also in other markets around the world um i think this is a positive development that we see with renova 4. exactly yeah, yeah i completely agree with what you mentioned it's uh transmission and and financing those are the two main challenges we have uh, in Argentina mm. regarding the, the wind sector. Mm. Mm. Um, Gabriel and, and Ramon, we are getting a, a lot of question here, of course, about the, the current political situation and, and what that means for for renewables, for wind in Argentina. I mean, no one of us has a has a glass bulb to, to foresee the future. Um, but uh, is maybe uh, you want to share sort of a, a general statement on on the long term perspective of wind in in Argentina with without uh, uh, the the political situation as said no one from our, from us can can predict the outcome of the election or something like that. Uh, right. Thanks, Ken. Uh, sorry. No, go, go ahead, Ramon. Yeah. Okay. No, thanks, Karen. Uh, I, in my in my view uh, of course we, we don't have the the the, the ball the crystal ball to, to see what is going to happen but but i would say there are at least two, two very uh, relevant facts that that are going to let's say to guide somehow the future uh, for argentina uh, the first one is that um overall in argentina we see uh, a deployment of uh, renewable energy projects because in 2015, uh, the Congress took a very relevant decision that was to um, modify the Renewable Energy Act to include in the Act uh, mandatory targets of renewable energy consumption for the country. And this was not a, a decision taken by uh, one uh, political party. This this was a decision taken by all the Congress and uh, especially was in, uh, enacted and it, it was proposed by the party uh, that is now uh, in the opposition of the of, of, of the government of Argentina. So in that sense, um, the mandatory targets is a guideline uh, for a each kind of, of government that is, is coming into duties in Argentina. And the second one is that, uh, in fact, there is a real mm, mm, sector, economic sector in Argentina behind 
uh, renewable energies, especially behind wind power. This means that you, you have uh, engaged more than 10,000 jobs in, in the industry. You, you have got um, uh, imports of, of, of duties. You have got uh, imports of billion, millions of, of dollars for the country. Uh, with its uh, impact on the on the balance of payments, and this is um, a reality. This is not wishful thinking. And uh, the government that will take duties in in the future uh, probably will find this reality on the table. And uh, of course, uh, maybe they have their own uh, or different. Uh, understandings about how to construct different policy measures or frameworks uh, to go ahead and, and some elements from the framework can can be changed but the fundamental drivers of the investments are there and uh, i would also highlight that uh, the investment climate in argentina when around uh, especially around two was delivered was not the best and despite that the investments are there so uh, because the structure of the program is robust enough to uh, give much more investment confidence in this sector than in any other sector in Argentina so somehow uh, the investments in the renewable energy sector are preserved for partially preserved from the macroeconomic figures in, in Argentina because of the securitization uh, structure of the, of the projects. And this is something that uh, is uh, probably will be applied for uh, any investor that uh, wants to come into Argentina in the future. And if I did not understand uh, wrong, the intention of uh, round four is exactly to keep this structure and to 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 uh, to work on the security station of, of of the projects in similar terms as it was round one and round two. So, uh, in, in that sense, I I think that the elements to keep uh, the industry grow, growing are there with the current government and probably with the next government as well and this is not uh, let's say a contradictory with uh, trying to exploit other uh, energy sources in, in the country uh, with a different purposes this is my thinking about it um, yeah, from, from my side I, I, I agree with you ramon um and yes i think renewable energy in argentina they they are right here to, to stay for for, for a while, for longer. Um, we have a, a law, the Renewable Energy Law, that was passed in 2016. I had the support of all the political parties, so that's independent from from which could be the the, the next president or, or political uh, or, admi or administration here in, in Argentina. As I say we have all the political parties support the law. Uh, that's one important thing to mention and the other one is that uh, it's um, mandatory it's uh, we, we had to comply with the 20 percent of renewable energy by by 2025 so that's those are the two main main reasons of why uh, the political uh, yeah politics wouldn't affect uh, mm. renewable energy here in, in argentina yeah, and um, Gabriel, we exactly have a, have a question about the, the target of 20% of by 2025. When I understand you correctly, you're saying that this is still within reach, right? Yes. To, to achieve that target. Exactly. Yes. Very good. Um, we have another question, which I think is very interesting and very relevant, moving a bit away from auction and, and the programs, but actually to the more practical part that is the execution of projects. 
how is that in Argentina? Are projects executed on time? Are there delays? Um, maybe um, if, if you have those insights, you can also share a bit about the, the EPC landscape in, in Argentina. That would be great. All right. Well, I don't know if this is a question for me or for Ramon, but I, I could start mm -hmm. answering. You can start um, that. <laughs> Well, we have many projects. Uh, we have 59 projects awarded in Renovar 1, and then we have 89 in Renovar 2. Um, that's more than around 150 projects. <clears throat> it depends on the company. We have companies that they have complied with, with the times, with the deadlines, uh, even uh, before the, the COD, the, the commercial operating date. But then we have many other companies or developers that are uh, not big. I mean, there are small companies uh, and that considering the volatility that we suffer uh, during the past year, um, they were affected uh, for sure. So from, from the government, what we would have done, it's, it's um, we offer one more year uh, to all these developers to finish their their projects and and to uh, yeah give even more time so as they can find the the financing they they, they can achieve the the, the financial uh, closing financial 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 deadlines. So regarding your, your question, it's I think it's it's relative. It depends on on who's the developer. The, the big ones they always. Um, comply with all the all the, the estimated deadlines and the smaller ones um, considering the, the, the these financial problems uh, it's a bit more difficult and that's why we offer this this year of of additional time let's say. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I would add to that that yeah uh, it's necessary to, to distinguish between the, those projects that have um, already uh, resolve his financial uh, problem and the, the projects that do not have uh, enough financing uh, resources to, to start. But I would say once the project has started construction, the project usually is uh, constructed in less time than expected because there is an incentive to go for that. So the, the, the framework is incentivizing uh, with more profitability those projects that are um, uh, that that are entering uh, into in, into grid or connected before COD expected in the contract. So um, there is a supply chain in in Argentina uh, enough to to comply with the COD. If this was the question that the person um, was trying to 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 understand or to to find out, there is a uh, supply chain in Argentina that is capable to 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 facilitate the, the, the construction and, and the and the COD in time. Mm. Mm. Yes. Well, the, th thank you so much. Um, again, I think that's a that's a very um, relevant point. If delays actually become a bottleneck in a market or not, and I, I really appreciate your differentiated and differentiating answers here. Um, how about the situation in, in Argentina. Um, as said, uh, there's a lot of um, things going on in Argentina right now. We hear a lot of news um, for us not being in Argentina and um, no one of us can really for, foresee the, the future also when we maybe see at, uh, at past events um, that happened in the, in the Argentinian market. Um, I would like to thank here our two speakers, um, Gabriel and Ramon, um, for this uh, very good uh, perspective on the, on the Argentinian wind market. Um, I would also like to highlight um, two things. Um, GVAC Market Intelligence is updating their, um, our market outlook. Uh, you saw our updated outlook for Argentina. And uh, first and foremost, I would also um, point to you that um, GVAC is hosting um, the key industry event for the wind industry in Argentina, um, Argentina Wind Power on September 4th to 5th. And um, this is a this is an event 
um, where the key decision makers in that market uh, will will be present. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more also about the progress of Renova4 during this event. Um, I thank you all for, for dialing in today and participating in this webinar. Um, you can uh, reach out to us if you have any questions afterward or if you have any issues, maybe downloading the materials also. And uh, with that, I would like to close here and uh, again, would like to thank you and wish you all a very good day. Thank you very much, Karin and, and Ramon, and, and looking forward to seeing you in two weeks. Thank you very much, Gabriel. See thank you there. You. Thank you.